So General Motors GM has a really bizarre history with electric vehicles. First, they make the EV1, and it was great and amazing and revolutionary. Then they have them all round up and destroyed. Then they make the Volt and the Bolt and try to compete with Tesla. I think they haven't really fully made up their minds, and they haven't committed. But that all might change with the announcement they just had talking about their future and it being entirely electric. So I'm going to break this down, talk about everything that was announced and what I think it means for the future of General Motors and why there should be some room for optimism. But as always, before I begin, thank you so much for watching. If you're new, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. We're a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Dimension. So first and foremost, I kind of mentioned in my EV pickup truck video that I was really hoping that the Hummer EV would be both a pickup truck and an SUV, and it sounds like they're doing exactly that. I think it's going to be the GMC Hummer EV from the GMC brand and the Cadillac Lyric. Now, these could be different platforms and different cars, but it seems like that's kind of the direction that they're going in. So let's start by making a general overview of what was announced. First of all, they're partnering with LG Chem in a very similar format to how Tesla partnered with Panasonic back when they made the Gigafactory. So LG Chem and Chevy are going to co-create a factory in Ohio where they're planning on producing 30 gigawatt hours of battery capacity a year with additional room to grow into the future. So first of all, that's a pretty big deal that shows you that they're taking the volume of car sales very seriously. If you're planning on making a compliance car and you sell 10,000 of them, you don't have to really procure battery supply. You can just buy it from a company and be on your way. But that's not what GM's doing. So GM has an entire battery strategy. So that's the first reason why I think GM might finally, after about two decades, fully be committing to electric vehicles. The second reason is they're making some pretty big investments into the battery chemistry. They have a new formulation called NMCA, which hopes to reduce the amount of cobalt and in its place, replace it with aluminum. So Tesla goes NCA, then a lot of companies go NMC, and Chevy is planning to go NMCA, which is a new formulation I don't think very many people are using just yet. So overall, the big picture, GM is planning to invest $20 billion into this electrification effort, and that'll translate to about $3 billion per year. One of the key takeaways that I think is gonna be very important to understand is that they made it a point that this entire project, this electrification project and all the EVs that result from it, are going to be profitable from day one. They are not going to be looking to make EVs, sell them at a loss in some interest of, of market saturation. They're going to be profitable from day one. And I'm gonna go through all the reasons why they're absolutely right, and I think they will be profitable. At the heart of any EV is its battery pack. And General Motors has a brand new battery platform and architecture that they're calling Ultium, or the ultimate lithium. I'm, I'm making that up. I don't know what it stands for, but I'm sure the marketing people will tell you that's something along those lines. And their goal with Ultium is to have one single battery cell. And they're going to be making them pouch batteries, which they did in the original Bolt as well. And this one type of pouch cell can be used in every car they're going to make, whether you have a lot of them in a bigger car or less of them or stack them horizontal or vertical. And we'll talk about all that at the heart of it is going to be one single cell. So even though they're going pouch instead of cylindrical like Tesla, their strategy is very similar. Make one part, mass produce the batteries and use the same one kind of battery in everything that they do. And to show further the amount of thought they've put into this from an architecture perspective, consider this. I think this is the coolest fact that I learned. GM has a really complicated product line right now. They have everything currently from a Spark, to a Suburban and an XL and all these giant cars. Their brand and model strategy has been really complicated and a lot of the brands, they just keep trying new things and it doesn't really work. So currently General Motors has 555 different combinations of chassis, of engine, transmission, and all that is needed to be able to fulfill their entire lineup. What's really cool is with their new approach to having modular batteries, modular motors, and really standardized chassis is they could provide all the same cars that they do now with just 19 different combinations of batteries, motors, and chassis. That is the first reason why GM is going to be profitable in this. It's one thing to say, we're going to make this Bolt EV, make one car, find batteries somewhere, and produce it on some plant. It's a different thing to say, let's rethink our entire lineup. They believe that they can address everything from cars with 50 to 200 kilowatt hour battery packs, 
that translates to between 200 and 400 miles of range, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, and everything from 235 horsepower to 1,000 horsepower, which is what they'll have in their top of the stack GMC Hummer EV. So that all makes sense from a logistics perspective, and it should really drive down cost and complexity. The first controversial thing for anybody who's a fan of Tesla will notice is they're all in on the pouch battery, as opposed to the cylindrical battery that Tesla is currently using. And we'll know more about what Tesla is going to do in the future at their battery and powertrain investors day. So GM is going to continue to go with the pouch battery sell. So some of the benefits, of course, are packing, being very easy to stack side by side. You can get better volumetric performance than the cylindrical battery, which has a lot of wasted area between the cells. And soon they believe that by mass producing this one cell for everything they make, that they'll have a cost advantage as well. So to put it into perspective, one Ultium battery cell, the pouch cell, will have a 100 amp hour capacity, which is roughly the equivalent of 20 of Tesla's cylindrical cells. One cool aspect about their batteries and the modules is that the BMS for the batteries is going to be able to handle different chemistries. So let's say in 2020, they build the next generation Bolt and it has their NMCA chemistry formulation. In that case, the cell would be able to broadcast what the chemistry is and the BMS would be able to handle charging and discharging accordingly. Now what's really cool is they could program that to treat one module differently in the future if let's say you have a bad cell and GM goes, okay, it's 2023, we have a new formulation and we're gonna change that one bad module out. And if this new module is higher energy density, lower weight and a new chemistry, when they put it in, the BMS is gonna be able to read it and say, okay, this is a new chemistry which has these characteristics, treat it differently. So they're building modularity and upgradability from the ground up, which is another brilliant move on their part. So that tells you that they're really thinking about the future and they have plans to be able to invest in battery chemistry and formulations to improve on these things over time. They're not just gonna be pumping out one type of cell because their cars all have to rely on that. They're gonna build the dimensions the same, but what goes into the chemistry and the formulation is gonna change and improve over time. Going back to their battery manufacturing plant, their gigafactory, if you will, it's gonna be the size of 30 football fields, and it's gonna have an output of 30 gigawatt hours per year. To put that into context, if GM wanted to build 1 million EVs a year with an average battery pack of about 75 kilowatt hours, they would need 75 gigawatt hours of capacity. So this one plant, which can potentially scale up even further, gets them almost halfway there. So it's a great start. And for the sake of comparison, the Gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada, the Tesla built, is currently at around 35 gigawatt hours of capacity, and they have plans to maybe bump that to 54 here in the near term. So they're investing in a partnership and a new factory to build their own batteries. That really is one of the most important starting steps for any company that's trying to get into mass manufacture of EVs. The battery supply chain is going to be very tricky and clearly GM cares about that. But what I think is even more interesting is the fact that they really are investing in the advancement of battery technology as well. They mentioned that they are working on cathodes with zero cobalt and that is something they want to introduce here in the near term. Probably not to start but slowly phased in. They're even working on zero nickel batteries. They're also playing around with zeolite additives, which they believe can give their battery packs a lifetime of 1 million miles. For anyone who's into batteries, you know the future that's been promised for a while is the solid state battery. And a solid state battery would actually have a lithium anode. And that would be far more energy dense than how we do batteries today. But of course, solid state batteries are also tricky because rather than having a wet electrolyte where the ions pass through, everything would be solid state. And as a result, it gets a little bit tricky when you deal with ions passing through various different solids. But the future is going to be solid state batteries. And when that happens, you can imagine all the batteries that we currently have to be about twice as energy dense. So that means if you have a 300 mile range EV today, that same car with the same amount of number of batteries could go 600 miles. By having a modular approach where you have one single cell size and each module is a couple of different variations in size, you can in the future change out your batteries if you get a 10% improvement or you have some new chemistry or if there's a battery shortage in the raw material supply that forces you to make some other type of chemistry even if you don't really want to. 
you can make all of that work with that dedicated BMS that is on the modular level, which says as long as one module has the same kind of chemistry, we can treat that separately, even if all the modules in the pack are not the same. And that's a great move that I think is going to pay off for GM. So speaking of cell, module, and pack, they have a couple of interesting ways that they can orient their modules. The first would be to put the pouches horizontally and stack them into a small stack, resulting in a very small module. This would be great for small hatchbacks, small cars, coupes, sedans, things that have a low roof line and a low ride height, and maybe not as much need for range because they're more aerodynamic. The next configuration would be still horizontal, but more pouches stacked up, resulting in a slightly taller module. So this would be great for full-size sedans, maybe smaller crossover SUVs and things like that. And finally, with the same one cell pouch, you could take them and stack them vertically. And as a result, you have an even taller pack, which would be great for pickup trucks and larger SUVs. And at the maximum capacity range, they can even take these modules and stack two on top of each other. So that is how you get the largest range and the largest capacity, which is what they will feature in the GMC Hummer EV. So with the same one cell, they can make all these different cars. In your mind, you're probably thinking, okay, so that's how with one cell and one approach, they can make cars that are tiny, like the Chevy Spark, all the way to the Suburban and the Silverado and all their big trucks too. And all the while, their factories can just mass produce this one pouch cell in one size. And that I think is probably the biggest and single most important reason why I think GM really is serious and why I've, there's reason to be optimistic with what they're doing. So that's the battery in the module. Great flexibility with different chemistries, very uniform modules with the same one type of cell. And that idea also transfers to their powertrains. They're gonna have one motor. Now this one motor can be used in different ways based on the type of batteries you have in modules and how much output you have. It can be as little as 235 horsepower, which would be on the low end. And this would be front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So let's go to the bottom of their stack. Something cheap like the Spark a cheap economy hatchback. That could potentially have a front wheel drive layout where you have this one type of electric motor in the front and the smallest battery pack configuration. Then if you wanna move up into something more exotic, more performance oriented or luxury oriented, you could go with the rear wheel drive motor configuration and a, and a slightly larger battery pack. Think like Camaro, maybe the Camaro has rear wheel drive, and actually, to be honest, I think the Camaro would have all-wheel drive going forward. But something like the Malibu or Impala, something in that range, that could be rear-wheel drive with a middle-sized battery pack. Then, if you want to have maximum performance, you can have all-wheel drive, motor in the front, motor in the back. And for the crazy maximum power needs, you'd go three motors. And you'd have two in the front or two in the back, I'm not exactly sure, and one in the back or the front but a total of three resulting in 1,000 horsepower. So that means that each of these motors can vary from 235 horsepower to 333 roughly horsepower based on, I think, the modules of the battery and how much it can draw. That is how GM can replace the 555 different combinations with just 19 in the EV world. This is why GM is actually going to do this. To have all these different engines, the 1.4 liter turbo and the 2.0 and the 2.4 and the 2.2 and the mating transmissions that all, it is a hassle to have to constantly deal with all of these different configurations. Electric motors in comparison are so simple. You can have a 300 horsepower electric motor and based on how big the battery packs are and how much amps it can draw, the power can be 235 to 330, and that can power 90% of your cars. How many cars on the road have more than 330 horsepower? Very few. GM's current approach with having all these different platforms and 500 combinations is expensive. From a logistics perspective and a supply chain perspective, you have to have all these different engines ready and the transmissions that go with them. And to be able to build a car, and if there's a shortage in any one thing, you're, you're kind of screwed. But here with electric motors, you're just building one type. You can have one plant that builds GM's electric motor and they can build them by the tens of thousands a day. It's one type, they don't change. That means that using them and replacing them even is cheap because again, it's just one type. 
And in the future, maybe they make it a more improved and more efficient motor, and they can replace all their motors going forward with that. But the idea is it'll be modular, it'll fit in a standard size, and they didn't really get into the details about if it'll be an induction motor or permanent magnet, but those details will eventually um, get announced, I think, going forward. So that covers the big part of it, the batteries, the battery manufacturing, battery supply chain, and electric motors. The second part is what I like to call all the convenience features, right? Clearly in your mind, most of you are probably comparing this to Tesla. So how Tesla does things, they do things that make buying a car, picking a configuration, charging it at home, charging it on the go, they make all of that stuff super easy. And GM, I think, has really taken note and they are following suit. It starts with a partnership they have with a company called Q Merit. So rather than getting online and looking for a licensed electrician to come and install your home charger, it'll all happen on Chevy's portal. Q Merit is the company they're gonna go with and they'll give you two or three really good quotes from licensed electricians. You can pick the quote you like and have it all installed with just a couple of clicks. No phone calls, no meetings, nothing else. They even mentioned vehicle to grid when they talked about the batteries. So they didn't really mention details, but that would be really interesting. If you have a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, that could power your entire house and then you can charge it while the sun is out or some combination thereof. But that's interesting. And we'll cover more about that when the news is revealed. They're going to integrate with the grid your utility company, and they're gonna figure out what times there's more renewable energy on the grid. So let's say where you live from seven to 9 p.m., that's when the wind really kicks up and there's more wind power available. And the car can be programmed to say, okay, let's charge at that time when there's more renewables online. It's really smart. So the second thing is GM is also building a lot more charging at all the GM offices around the world. They mentioned that if you offer charging at work, people are six times more likely to buy an EV than not. So that's really important. And GM is going to have tons, thousands of new chargers at all of their campuses and factories and plants around the world. And in terms of charging on the go, they are partnering with EVgo, EV Connect, and ChargePoint. And they're going to tie into all those services and they're tying all that together in what they're calling Energy Assist, which will be a part of the My Chevy app. Now, this is exactly what Tesla does, right? If you're going on a 500 mile road trip, in your Tesla, you just put where you're going and it will figure out which superchargers are not being used, how far you can make it and figure out your route for you and tell you, hey, take the exit, charge for 30 minutes, then get back on the road. This is what Chevy is doing and they're not building their own chargers, but they're gonna partner with these companies and provide a similar service. So your GM EV will know which charge point and EV Go and EV Connect stations have openings, be able to tell you go to this one and charge it. They'll know how fast they can charge. They'll know how long you should charge and it'll make for a better route planning system. So this will be very similar in my opinion to the Tesla system. Again, this is what makes owning a Tesla really easy. I've taken two road trips now, one about 800 miles, the second 1100 miles. And it was such a breeze because I just put my destination and I just started driving. It was really no thought behind it. And I think GM is planning a similar thing because that's what's missing now. If you own a Bolt and you own a Tesla, the experiences are very different. But I think the future is gonna be connected and GM understands that they're not gonna be able to build out 16,000 charging stations like Tesla has overnight. But if they make strategic partnerships and they tie it all together and they have that unified experience, they can have a similar end result. The other thing that I think is really exciting is they are saying that they're going to have updates monthly to the app and to the software, which tells you that the cars are going to get updated frequently, just like Tesla. Tesla has led the way. They have been the pioneers. They've done everything the best. And GM has taken note and they are trying to build a similar type of experience. And I think they should be commended for what they've done. I believe that GM is serious for the first time since the EV1 and everything else that they've done. They are serious about saying, look, let's slowly phase out everything else and go electric because we have the modularity and the designs in place to make this easier, to be profitable. And we think that our customers will buy it. They've mentioned over and over in their investor presentation that a lot of the people who buy Chevys are in the middle of America and the coasts kind of aren't really big on Chevy. So they hope that to change that. And I think the way you do that is by having some really great EV options. So my perspective, bravo GM. I'm really happy to hear what, what you guys have done. Now, clearly this is an investor presentation. And what I mean by that is the point of this presentation was to tell their investors, look, we're not gonna be profitable for a while. 
we're going to lose money. We're going to be investing money. But you should be excited because, yeah, short term, we're going to lose some money and the stock might take a little bit of a hit. But you should be buying more of our stock, not less, because we believe the future is going to be bright. And I got to tell you, I agree. I agree. GM has had a pretty rough last couple of decades, but I think that they're smart. And what they're planning to do is revitalize the brand and make them a car that people want to buy again. Currently, I'm not going to lie to you, I've never wanted a GM product. And Tesla has the opposite situation where it's very desirable. It's what everybody wants. So GM has an uphill battle, even if they have all the engineering down and they make better looking cars than the Bolt. They make something really good looking they're still gonna have a little bit of a battle because there's that image and brand perception. So for example, Cadillac has been doing terribly lately. And the reason why is a Cadillac is just a rebranded Chevy. So if you have the Suburban, you slap a couple of Cadillac badges on it and you call it an Escalade. That doesn't translate anymore. Not while BMW and Mercedes are making really premier flagship cars. So the Cadillac brand really has been diluted to nothing. It's just another nameplate. But how you change that is by building that Lyric, which is what they're calling the Cadillac EV SUV. Make that thing a thing of beauty, beautiful, 400 miles of range, sure, a hefty price tag, but when celebrities are driving it around and you kind of see it, people will again think, whoa, look at this huge eight passenger, massive American style EV made by a company called Cadillac. And that's how you go from being viewed as nothing really special, just a rebrand, to actually being desirable. So that's what GM is going to do, and I think it's pretty smart. I think GM is going the route of keeping their brands the same, um, and that may or may not be the best choice. And I do think that GM is going to have a couple of rough quarters because this stuff takes time, but I think the future is promising. So what do you guys think? That was a little bit of a long video, but this was a really great announcement. I'm really happy to see what they're doing. From a engineering perspective, I think they've got a good idea of architecture, and I think it's going to pay off in a big way. 555 different combinations to 19, all possible because of electric motors and batteries. So before we wrap up, I want to take a quick moment and thank everybody on Patreon. YouTube is a tough place to do business. It's very unreliable at times. So our patron support on Patreon is at the backbone of what makes what we do possible. So if you want to be a rock star supporter of the show and support us even more, consider joining us on Patreon. So what do you guys think? Would you buy one of these new cars? There's a new Bolt, there's the GMC Hummer, there's the Cadillac Lyric. These are all gonna be pretty pretty sweet cars, I think. Um, would you buy one? What do you guys think overall about GM or the announcement in particular? I'd love to know, leave us your comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ricky, and this is Tupac DaVinci.